When it comes to chess, I typically don't take what ChatGPT says seriously. But the other day, when I was asking what the best refutation against the cow opening is, ChatGPT replied with the stampede attack. Now, I was like, what is the stampede attack? Like, did you just come up with this? Like, does this exist? Like, what is going on? So, in this video, I'm gonna try to see if the stampede attack is actually a refutation to the cow opening or if this was just ChatGPT being very stupid. Now, I created a game between stockfishes stockfish playing with the white pieces and with the black pieces, where white played the cow opening and black played the stampede attack. So everybody, let me show you what the stampede attack is. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I always thought that I was gonna create a variation called the stampede attack because, you know, cows going on a stampede all together. You know, I have no idea, but now it seems like ChatGPT has created. So the stampede attack goes like this. E3, D5, which is quite a common response to E3. Now D3, we continue with our cow opening. Knight F6, Knight E2, C5, seems normal right now. I mean, D5, C5 is a very standard way of playing as the cow. Knight D2, we are now ready to place our knights on the cow squares, B3 and G3. And now B5. So now it's starting to get a little bit crazy. I mean, the stampede attack really is saying, hey, we are gonna go on a pawn stampede, you know? So knight g3, and now the move that really will make you shocked. G5. <laughs> what? G5? This move just literally looks so weird. Like it would make so much more sense to go E5 and like get a pawn stampede going on in the center. But G5, I mean, it just seems like you're creating some incredible holes for the king whenever the king goes ahead and castles. And it just doesn't seem like the pawn on G5 has any purpose. But it doesn't stop there. After knight B3 and after white has finally finalized the cow opening, the stampede attack goes H5, another pawn. And now you've literally, I mean, five out of the eight pawns that you have in the starting position have started to push. You're even right now sacrificing the C5 pawn. So this, everybody, is the stampede attack. And honestly, it does look like a stampede. It's very creative. And we're going to see if it's actually good. So Knight takes c5, this is the move that makes the most sense in the world, right? You pick up the pawn that has been given to you. And now you keep on going with the stampede, h4, kicking away the knight. Now, little disclaimer, this game was played between Stockfish 15.1 and Depth 14, which pretty much means that... Um, Stockfish can see 14 moves in the future, which is more than most of us can see. Now, the reason, once again, why I haven't put this up in the absolute highest depth is because our games, your games, my games, they are not, you know, 3,800 level games. They are games that are way below the level of this chess game. So I feel like this gives a little bit more practical chances that we might see in our games that we might not get in games that are in, you know, Stockfish Depth 99, where it's like a 3,800 game. So that is why I on purpose put it up in Depth 14. It gives a little bit more of, you know, chances of fun things happening, which I love. So after h4 and the knight is kicked away, the knight retreats to e2 and these pawns, we can see that they've advanced quite a lot, right? So now e5. Now, I mean, you keep on going with the stampede. I don't know if you've realized it, but black does not care about getting the pieces out. No, black wants to get the pawns out. That's everything that matters here. So e5 and d4, you defend this knight, which was right now being kicked away by the bishop or being threatened by the bishop. Now, to simply destroy white's pawn structure, bishop takes c5, pawn takes c5 was played, and now knight a6 threatening this pawn. Now, you don't really have any way of defending the pawn. You can't go b4 to defend it. You can't go anything like that. So now c6 was played. And this is just to defend the pawn, but we can also see that this stampede pawn over here on b5 is quite weak, right? So now knight b4, once again, threatening the pawn. I mean, black is not really 
uh, hasn't had enough. That's the word I was looking for. Black hasn't had enough and wants to get the pawn back. Because right now, I mean, as white, you're a pawn up right now. So in this position, knight c3 with the idea of capturing this pawn on b5, either with the bishop or with the knight. If the knight would now take this pawn over here, then we would say thank you. We would take this pawn and then pick up some more material. So here, bishop f5 was played. Room looking at c2, both the knight and the bishop are looking at this pawn. Now, in this position, a really pretty move was played, which was this crazy move e4. The idea of e4 is that you're blocking this bishop from capturing on c2, and if you take with the bishop, then well, then we can take it, right? So then we can get rid of this bishop, but if you take with the knight, we can see that the bishop is now blocked, and we have time to go bishop takes b5. Look at how pretty. Now, this bishop is creating some trouble over here. So, so far, I feel like the position is pretty good. I mean, to be honest, these stampede pawns are not that strong. I mean, they are weak. That's the thing, right? The cow opening, what my claim was with this opening is that it's very easy for black to overextend. And it, the stampede attack is literally like overextension times a thousand. Like you're really overextending. So, you know, practically, I think that this is a pretty good position for white. Like, we are some material up, and I feel like all these pawns are really weak, and we're going to be safer than black is. So I actually quite like this position right now, even though it's pretty much equal. So the idea here is, because uh, you may say, you know, what happens, Anna, if there would be something like knight takes c3, and then taking over here, I mean, look at all of the stuff that's going on here. The idea is that... If knight takes c3, which was not played, there is this crazy beautiful move, c7 check. Look at that, c7 check. And if you take now the bishop, this is really beautiful, we take the queen. So this is actually really pretty. And if the king moves, we take the queen with check as well. And then we're going to be picking this up. So it's actually really pretty. So after bishop takes b5, stockfish one, king f8, and now castles. You know, we don't really want to fall for all of these things h3 with the idea of simply destroying the little box in front of the king i like calling this a little box you know it's like it's like the king is safe in a box and then everything you try to do to get to the king is destroy the box you know create holes in a box it's like a cereal box that you just go like with a scissor boom 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 and you create like holes in it okay i don't know if that makes sense but h3 and now you can go g3 but you can also go g4 doing the same thing of getting you know getting some air for the king but also not allowing black to take here and open this up but at the same time you're threatening the bishop so the bishop has to move and now queen e2 um just basically getting the queen to defend the bishop but also putting a little bit more of pressure on this e5 pawn so rook c8 threatening the pawn rook d1 the threat is now to go takes well if knight takes, takes, and takes, there is right now knight takes e4, and if takes, you can take here, because if captures, there is rook takes d8, which is really nice. So instead, king g7 was played, and now knight takes d5, and this, everybody, according to Stockfish itself, it's a brilliant move. Stockfish literally said, hey, I know that this is a brilliant move and I'm about to make a brilliant move. So knight takes d5 is a brilliant move because you're sacrificing the knight, but what you're also doing is that you're opening up this d file. So after the knight captures, you have this beautiful move c4, and the knight cannot move now because the queen is hanging. So this is really pretty. And you're also then eliminating the knight that's basically threatening this pawn. So knight dc3, you're removing, you're, you're kicking out, or sorry, you're moving the knight um, at the same time as you're threatening this queen. So if you would now take the rook, then, you know, you could take the queen. So now pawn takes, and after queen f6, you cannot capture back here because of queen takes e5 check. After queen f6, queen e3 was played. And because I know that we are right now about to see some absolutely beautiful, 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 uh, brilliant moves in just a moment, I'm just going to set it up so you guys can see when uh, the brilliant moves actually happen. So... There we go. Now you guys can see a brilliant move. So queen e3, a6, 
And now everybody, this is the first time, or the first, but this is really the moment that Stockfish Depth 14 made a mistake. But actually in this position, Black already has a better position because of these pawns. I mean, we are right now two pawns up, we're chilling, we're enjoying our time, having so many extra pawns, but the issue here is that our pawns absolutely suck. Like they are disastrous. You know, having three pawns stocked up like that, it's, it's just really not good. The pawns are just so weak and they're pretty easily going to be able to be recaptured. So here bishop takes a6 was played by Stockfish and actually here the best move was to go f3. If you let this go for a little while, well, after f3 Stockfish thinks this is slightly better for black but not as bad as it seems right now. So bishop takes a6 was played and... Now, rook c d8. And keep in mind that we are right now three pawns up. I mean, the stampede opening has given us three pawns. But we just have terrible pawns. So rook f1, uh, we didn't want to exchange rooks. And now queen takes c6. And this is the start of the fall of our pawns, you know? So bishop b5, I mean, this is now the moment that black really goes for the stampede because now they just start picking up all of our stuff, you know? So bishop b5 threatening the queen, queen c8 threatening this pawn on g4, f3, def sorry, defending and attacking, and then here rook h4, which is actually a brilliant move as well, according to Stockfish. The idea of rook h4 is that you're right now giving up this knight, you're sacrificing the knight, but if you take it, then boom, rook takes g4 check, and let me tell you, this king is not going to survive for a long time after queen b7 with the threat of capturing on e4 and then checkmating on g2. This pawn right here, which is like an insane like rock that's solidifying all of black's attack is just super strong right now and this king is not going to survive for long so rook h4 is a beautiful move and now queen e2 with the idea of basically defending on g2 and now f6 another brilliant move according to stockfish the idea of f6 is that you're once again giving up the knight but it's a waiting move. I mean, you can still not take the knight. You can literally not do anything as white, which is absolutely beautiful. And if you start pushing now on a4, if you start doing random things, well, then knight takes c3 is going to be played. So this absolutely brilliant. Bishop e3, now knight takes c3, queen e1, threatening the knight. And now, brilliant move once again, black sacrifices the rook. Rook takes g4. Look at how beautiful this move is. Rook takes g4. You're giving up a full rook. And if you now would go, uh, let's say that you would capture here. That is that after queen takes, if you go king h1, there is a checkmate as you can see over here. But if you would go here after takes and takes, if you would go queen g3, there is 92 check. And then after the king goes somewhere, you're going to pick up the queen and you're going to checkmate in seven moves. So king h1... Knight takes b5, takes, takes, and now bishop d3, you're still leaving this rook to be taken by white. I find this absolutely beautiful. So now bishop d3 threatening this rook, rook c1, nobody's picking up the rooks that are hanging, and now rook c4, you get the rook out of the attack, and you place it on c4. So takes, takes, rook f2, bishop takes b5, and now all of a sudden, black is a pawn up. Stockfish just got an extra pawn, but not only that, our king is super weak. So, you know, we go on some desperate moves, a4, trying to take the bishop, but there's not really much that can happen. And here, we're in an endgame where, basically, white is three pawns down, which is absolutely disastrous. So, you know, a few more moves happened. We start, I mean, black started pushing the pawns like a real stampede. Look at that. Look at all the pawns just pushing beautiful getting the king involved and now the bishop and the queen are pretty much like you know checkmating but not really but we're gonna get another pawn and i mean stockfish is just so incredibly strong i mean this is actually crazy and after all of this queen c5 king takes d3 queen takes a5 in this position boom now boom boom promotion checkmate everybody <laughs> absolutely insane so Black actually won with the stampede attack. 
And I think that the conclusion that we can draw from this game, because I actually don't think that White had such a terrible like position after the opening. I think the conclusion that we can draw from this game is that this stampede attack is actually a viable viable opening for Black. I mean, it's actually crazy. I cannot believe that ChatGPT came up with this, but this is actually a viable opening that you can try out if you're facing the cow opening. If you really want to go full on cow, cow versus stampede, you can play this. There's still theory that needs to be made here. There's still, you know, a lot of variations we need to look at. But the fact that there's actually a line that's actually quite interesting against the cow is making me quite happy. So this, everybody, is the stampede attack. Let me know in the comments down below if you end up trying it and let me also know how the cow opening is serving you so far. Like I said, I don't think we need to be scared of the stampede attack. The cow can still beat this opening. It's not over for the cow. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you all in the next one.